What's up, guys, and welcome to the One Take Podcast. I'm Gil. I'm here with my brother, Alon. Say hello. hello. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel. Hello. My other brother. And this is going to be a news episode, and we're actually recording on Thanksgiving. So I thought we could start in 10 words or less. Alon, what are you thankful for this holiday season? I'm thankful for family, for food, and all these great movies that are coming out, which we'll, we'll talk about shortly. Daniel? You said less than 10 words, right? Less than 10 words, right? Yeah, you, <laughs> you have five words left. <laughs> Four words left? Oh, I completely <laughs> forgot about right. that rule when I said mine. All right, Daniel, <laughs> that's his big debut in the podcast. <laughs> and for me, I'm going to say I'm thankful for The Mandalorian and to finally have a great start. I think I ran out of words. <laughs> All right. And uh, any Thanksgiving movies that we like? Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. So the only Thanksgiving movie. I'm not sure there are. Do you know any others? That's the only one I could think of. But it's a great the, one. Um, the Mel Gibson turkey movie? Chicken Run? <laughs> if you hear any sounds in the background, that's our, our family preparing for our one-take Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, yeah, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which is near and dear to my heart. Alon, why is that? Um, my birthday, remember? You don't know oh, yeah, yeah. On your birthday, you screened it at the community theater? No, that was a different movie. Well, at uh, we screened Goodfellas one year. Oh, right. And then the next year, my, my next birthday, we screened yeah. Planes, Trains, and Gil Automobiles. You used to work at the community theater in our hometown. Can we stop giving away personal information? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to bleep out yeah. every time that you've referenced it. Gil used to bleep. I <laughs> use Google community theater. You're going to find many results. Uh, not as many as you think. Not if you cross-reference it to where there have been private screenings of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> what other theater has screened... Goodfellas, eh, probably a lot actually. Yeah. Anyway. Also, was this even like re uh, recorded anywhere, like on their website or anything? No, definitely not. <laughs> it would be on my MySpace page though, because <laughs> that's where I advertise the event. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. There was a lot of movie news this week, and as always, our goal here on One Take is to find something, anything that gets a one excited or to care about anything happening in the pop culture world. So uh, the first up, this will see if this moves your needle. Godville, God, Godzilla, <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say there. Godzilla. Godville sounds pretty cool. It does sound good, yeah. <laughs> Godzilla versus Kong. So this was scheduled for March 13th, 2020. Just this week, they announced they're going to push it eight months to November 20th, 2020. There have been a lot of rumblings that people have been worried about this movie because Godzilla, a few years ago, with Brian Cranston. Yeah. We all saw that, right? I remember that. Do you like that movie? I don't think I loved it. But you liked it, right? It was all right. Yeah, I think I, I think I liked it. That was most people's reaction to it. It was a pretty big hit box office-wise. Then there was Kong Skull Island, which took place years ago. I think it took place in the 60s. That was another one. Uh, I don't think either of you saw it, right? No. No. I saw it. I thought it was also pretty good. Didn't love it. I liked it. But it did well at the box office. Then the Godzilla sequel, Godzilla King of Monsters, flopped. Made $366, $386 million globally. And the word is that it had to make five fifty to 600 to break even. Uh, but this Godzilla vs. Kong was already in production. But based off of King of Monsters, people have been worried about it. Is that why they pushed it back? Maybe they're trying to retool it, make sure it's going to be a bigger hit. We don't really know yet. But Alun, King of Monsters, I think you were the only one at this table who saw that movie. Yeah, it, it wasn't good. Did you watch it and think, you know what would make this better? If we threw King Kong into the mix. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it probably couldn't have hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so are you, your thoughts on Godzilla versus Kong? I gave them a chance last time. I think they've lost my uh, commitment. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna see the next one unless it happens to have amazing reviews, which I would not bet on. What does it need to get on Rotten Tomatoes for you to go out of your way, leave your home, and go to the theater to see this movie? Eighty, at least an eighty. All Critic right. reviews or viewer reviews? Critic uh, reviews, critic. right? Yeah. yeah. 
What about you, Daniel? Sometimes there's a big discrepancy. With a movie like uh, that, I'd be surprised if there's a big discrepancy. Yeah. Yeah. I think this movie would have to have like a 90% for me to have any interest. All right. So Daniel's definitely not seeing Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> <laughs> and Alon is maybe seeing it. Do you, do you're, do you have any uh, friends that uh, talk about... <laughs> Let me just cut it off right there. Do you have any friends? Do your friends <laughs> talk about... Does anybody care about Godzilla? Man on the street, just do you hear people talking about Godzilla? Do you think it's a franchise that has any legs nowadays? Not anymore. No. Daniel? No. Did it ever in the U.S.? I mean, the, the Godzilla back in the early 2000s, I remember... I think I was in elementary school when it came out, and there was a lot of buzz. Hmm. We were all excited for that movie. Matthew Broderick... What about you, Daniel? You're you're younger than us, so you're still in the in crowd. What are people to saying about Godzilla? <laughs> I haven't heard anybody <laughs> talk about Godzilla ever. To be fair, he was on a ten day meditation retreat. <laughs> where there was no talking. So you missed you were there when this big news hit. So Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's all right, let's move on from that and let's talk about another franchise. A a shambling corpse of a franchise, I think you could say. Walking Dead. Mm, <laughs> nice. Hold on, when's the last time you watched Walking Dead? Uh, I saw the whole season, the whole second season that had Negan in it. You know, like, first there was a season where it ended with him with the baseball bat. Oh, yeah. And then I saw the next one, and then the one after that, I, I stopped. Yeah. Dale, did you ever watch Walking Dead? I think I watched the first two or three seasons. Got it. That's when the show was considered sort of, most people loved season one, and... Then there's arguments over how long it lasted after that, ups and downs. I, I remember there being a general consensus that season two was bad. Oh, season two was rough. Yeah. Mm. Season two had a scene where they, they were looking for water, and they found a well, and at the bottom of the well, there was a zombie that was all bloated and gross because it had been at the bottom of that well for who knows how long. And their plan was to tie up uh, Glenn and lower him with a rope <laughs> all the way to the bottom of the well to try and take the zombie out. Like, even if you got that zombie out, are you going to go anywhere near that water? Right. Why did they just like tape a knife to the end of a long stick? <laughs> well, they wanted to remove the zombie. And they, well, to kill it first. They couldn't like lower like a lasso or something. And, like, well, the integrity the of the zombie's body had been so diminished by the water <laughs> yeah. that it just kept falling apart. But, but if you just remove the head, they die in Walking Dead, right? Right. But then you have a headless corpse in your well. But at least you kill it before you send a person down there. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> I would find another Wait, source. What season of Walking Dead was was where they like get set up on that farm? That was. I think that might have been three. Oh, okay. So I at least watched through the farm. Yeah. Stuff. Well, Alon, you and I hung on for a while. We yeah. made it years into that show, and uh, they are and they announced a year or so ago they're doing another spinoff. So there was Fear the Walking Dead a spinoff that took place right after the apocalypse began. Actually, it started right before the apocalypse began, which I thought was kind of cool. I thought, hey, we're going to see the beginnings of the zombie apocalypse. Then they time jumped, and we were sort of into it. There's another Walking Dead spinoff coming out, and they just announced the title for it. So first, I'll give you the premise. Daniel, I'm assuming you don't know anything about what I'm talking about. So this new Walking Dead spinoff will feature two young female protagonists and focus on the first generation to come of age in the apocalypse as we know it. Some will become heroes. Some will become villains. In the end, all of them will be changed forever. So it's kind of a young adult Hunger Games style mm. take on Walking Dead. It's an established society in the zombie apocalypse and people who grew up after the apocalypse hit. The name of this show is going to be The Walking Dead World Beyond. So, Alon, <laughs> will this bring you back to The Walking Dead franchise? Will you give World Beyond a chance? So, that sounds interesting. Uh, the story of two... Did you say they're sisters? Or no, they're just... Female protagonists. Okay. So, you know, it's a cool concept to have these two girls that maybe they're friends in the beginning and then they split ways and then one becomes good, one becomes bad. I like that concept. I'm not sure exactly where the zombies will fit in there. Maybe one will start leading uh, a nice village and the other will lead a group like Negan's or something right. crazy. 
So that could be cool, but uh, I, I don't have enough information yet. Um, <laughs> That's always your answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, a lot of the problems with the walking, the main one, is uh, sometimes I feel they're trying to be too artsy, and it's not done well enough to justify it, you know? Right. And uh, I, I don't know. I think uh, there's too many stupid mistakes done done by characters in the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, there's so many instances where I, I they get into a certain scenario, and I think to myself, the writers could have easily made them end up in that scenario through a more intelligent process. Right. But so they fix those issues. Which I think it's a lot of the same uh, creative writing oh, staff. Great. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never saw the other spinoff. You, you've told me that it's not bad. Uh, yeah, I watched uh, a season or so of Fear the Walking Dead, and I thought it did a better job of making characters that were interesting. I think it was a lower budget, so they were forced to focus more on character drama. And it, it worked pretty well for me. I mean, obviously not well enough to keep me watching, <laughs> but yeah. Daniel, what about you? Any chance you'll you'll be watching? At least watch the pilot. Give it a chance. Yeah, I would give it a shot. Uh, I gave the the other spinoff a shot. Like I you watched did. One you or two watched through the Walking it. Dead. Yeah. What was your opinion? I was intrigued, but like like I enjoyed the episodes that I saw, like the one or two, but not enough that I like remembered to watch it again. Okay. Um, I think the the new series could be cool in that. Well, I guess it would explore right two things, sort of like the psyche of people growing up there and then also like the social, like what society looks like. Right. But I guess from what we've seen from the writers, they're pretty bad at the former, right? Like character motivation and development and all that hasn't been that good. And we are already seeing the second, like what societies look like, like in the other Walking Dead series. So I don't know how much like new cool stuff you would get to see to some extent we've seen what a society looks like we've seen the beginnings of communities this is going to be more established Mm. like i expect to see what form of government do they have i think it's Uh, to that extent that actually sounds awesome i would love to see that all right all right so daniel's going to give it a chance i have a feeling alun's not watching this (laughs) but unless daniel sees it and maybe he'll really like it and Mm. then that'll bring alun back into the fold last thing on walking dead Will you be watching, Alun, the Rick Grimes-focused movie that's supposedly going to be in theaters? Uh, well, when's it coming out? I don't know. In uh, Homes. Oh, uh, they haven't announced the release plan. I mean, it was a surprise recently when they said it's going to be in theaters, but I suspect it's going to be a limited release, kind of like The Irishman, where it'll be screened for a few weeks in select yeah. theaters and then show up on... AMC. Yeah, I don't think I would see that in theaters. I might. I, I would watch it when it's available in homes. Um, although I would need to catch up on exactly what happened to Rick. I'm not yeah. sure how that all ended exactly. So, or I don't know. What's the stance on spoilers in this? I think as long as we give a fair warning. Okay. I'm curious. Is, is Rick still alive in the show? Okay. Ready, listeners. Walking Dead spoiler warning. Uh, we're gonna t- we're gonna start talking Walking Dead spoilers. Check the show notes if you want to know what timestamp to skip to in order to avoid these spoilers. What happened to Rick Grimes? It was announced that he was going to be leaving the show, and everyone assumed that meant he's going to die. So I had stopped watching Walking Dead by that point, out of curiosity. I jumped back into it for that episode, and basically, there's a moment where he has to sacrifice himself. He has to blow up a bridge or something, and he's in the explosion. So you assume he died. There was this secret society or this mysterious group of people that hinted at, which uh, we knew they had a helicopter. Occasionally we'd see a helicopter in the background. It was this big mystery. What is this helicopter? Well, it turns out that Rick survived the explosion. He was barely alive, laying on uh, the shore of like a lake or something. And this helicopter came by. They snatched him up and took him away to who knows where. So all the characters on the show believe he died in that explosion. And then The Walking Dead show had a several year time jump. So Rick is long forgotten. But they're going to be having, they've announced three movies. I think whether or not we get three will depend on the success of that first one. So presumably we're following Rick in that helicopter to parts unknown. Hmm. So the actor left the show, but he's still doing these movies? Yeah, because the reason he wanted to leave is he wanted to spend more time with family. So this lets him do that. If it's a movie, he has to shoot for part of the year. And the rest of the year, he gets to stay with his family. So is he not, like, acting full-time anymore? 
I don't know if he's not acting full time or maybe he's just going to take roles that allow him to remain local. Hmm. Anyway, enough about Walking Dead. Let's move on to a topic that I don't know why this keeps coming up. Uh, the Fugitive. So yeah. last week we talked about Harrison Ford being, being uh, brought back. I don't know what I mean by brought back. Harrison Ford being cast <laughs> in a role where he's uh, falsely or potentially falsely accused of murdering someone, which sounds very similar to the role he played in The Fugitive. And now they are. Warner Brothers is moving forward with a Fugitive remake. It's going to be helmed by Albert Hughes. You know who that is? Nope. Daniel? He directed The Book of Eli, From Hell, most recently Alpha. You definitely saw the trailers for that at least. That was about a kid and a dog or a wolf or something. I don't remember. Anyway, not much <laughs> is known about this remake except that the studio intends to put a new spin on the material. Alon, do you care about a Fugitive remake? Sure. I mean, I, I really like the original. Let's let's, uh, let's see what they I'm can do. Minded to this. What do you think about this new spin? What do you think that's going to be about? What was it again? A new spin. That's all What's, they've told us so far. <laughs> I thought maybe you said what the spin was and I no. missed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> let's see it. <laughs> Daniel, do you even know what The Fugitive is? is I mean, I've you... heard of it. I don't think I've ever actually seen it. The Fugitive was a TV show, I think back in the 60s, about a man who was falsely accused of murdering his own wife. Uh, 30 years later, they did a movie adaptation of it with Harrison Ford. And Tommy Lee Jones. And Tommy Lee Jones. Mm. And it was a great movie. It was actually nominated for, I think, eight Oscars. I would consider it a classic. Definitely a classic. There's a sequence which The Simpsons aped where he's standing at the top. Harrison Ford standing at the top of a, a dam, right? Mm -hmm. And he yells, I didn't kill my wife. And Tommy Lee Jones is like, I don't care. And then Harrison Ford jumps, and it was it was huge. Yeah. It's a big scene. Did you say aped? Yeah, I mean stolen, right? I've never heard that before. I believe you. Yeah, it's real. Interesting. Look it up. Uh, there is another Fugitive remake happening at the same time, strangely enough. Well, then, have you heard of the new web service in development called Quibi? No. Daniel? Oh, it's the new media company. Uh, where they're creating short form content for platforms like Snapchat, right? Yeah, that's right. I don't know, but I don't know if it's going to Snapchat, but I know that they're doing shows where they have episodes of ten minutes or less, yeah. and they're definitely designed with mobile in mind. They are creating a fugitive Quibi show hmm. where Kiefer Sutherland will take on the Tommy Lee Jones role, and they also have a new spin. So this is the premise of the Quibi fugitive. When a bomb rips through the Los Angeles subway train he's riding on, blue-collar Mike Farrow just wants to make sure his wife Allison and 10-year-old daughter Pearl are safe. But the faulty evidence on the ground and tweet now confirm later journalism paint a nightmarish picture. It looks to all the world that Mike was responsible for the heinous act. Wrongfully and very publicly accused, Mike must prove his innocence by uncovering the real perpetrator before the, leg before the legendary cop, Sutherland, heading the investigation, can apprehend him. One question. They refer to the character Mike Farrow as a blue-collar. doesn't say blue-collar blue, blue worker. <laughs> it's blue-collar Mike Farrow. Oh, but it's, so it's an adjective. Yeah. Blue-collar Mike Farrow. I think you can say that. Really? Well, what do you think about this premise? Uh, well, I love. I think Kiefer Sutherland is fantastic, and I think that casting sounds really interesting to me. Uh, the whole service itself—that sounds kind of. I'm not. I'm not sure how I feel about short ten-minute episodes for a show like this, but you know, maybe maybe it, maybe it makes sense. Let's right. see how they do it. Um, I'm kind of. Why are they doing two different remakes at the same time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hollywood, man. This is what they do. Huh. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine left to go work for Quibi. <clears throat> oh, that's a... Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. They raise like a billion dollars. It's all like Hollywood, like production companies are involved and stuff. The idea is like all short form content right now sucks. And they're trying to make it like premium. And I think by doing short form content, they're probably... It's probably easier to attract really high end talent. 
because the commitment's so low. Mm. But for me also, it's hard to get excited about a seven-minute episode of something, especially if it's designed to be episodic and each thing is going to try and be this self-contained arc ending on a cliffhanger every 10 minutes. Hard for me to get excited about that, but we'll be open-minded. Speaking of open-minded, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take an open mind to discuss this next topic, the DC Extended Universe. Variety recently did a report on the current state of the DCEU, as it's been coined. And uh, as, far as, I can tell, to, as far as I can tell, to be honest, reading through the Variety article, none of this felt like new information to me. I feel like I knew all of this already, but I thought it would be fun to talk about and kind of take stock of where we're at in terms of the DC movies. Uh, Alun, so far of the current slate of DC films, what have you thought? Have you liked any of them? Have you hated any of them? Where do you stand? Uh, let's see. I liked Wonder Woman. I didn't think it was amazing. Uh, I fell asleep during Justice League <laughs> on a plane. I wasn't like in the theater. Uh, right, unless you remind me of one, Joker is the only one that pops into my head as one I really enjoyed. The one that took place outside the the current continuity. Right. What about you, Daniel? Yeah, I think I've only seen Joker and Wonder Woman. Batman v Superman? Never seen I it. S- I saw that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I actually liked the movie which which kicked off the whole DC EU, Man of Steel. I don't think either of you saw that, but that Superman movie, I have a few issues with it, but overall, I thought it actually worked pretty well. And it's pretty memorable, too. The score is awesome. I liked Henry Cavill as Superman. I have similar complaints as everyone else had about it, but I actually thought it was pretty solid. Uh, But yeah, after that, Batman v Superman really didn't care for. Justice League was just a total meh movie. Wonder Woman was all right. So I think we agree on a lot of that. So DC right now is trying to right the ship. They just had Joker, which I think all three of us were a fan of, right? Mm -hmm. Daniel, you liked it? And let's see, so what do we know for sure is coming from DC right now? The next thing we've got coming up is Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. That's coming February 2020. I figure let's run down the line and just give me a yay or nay. We're looking forward to Birds of Prey. Well, does it have to be so binary? You can add some nuance to that if you'd like. Yay ish (laughs) oh because harley quinn is a great character um i don't know anything about all the other like her team in that movie right and yeah i don't know you saw the trailer right yeah and post trailer feeling more or less excited for it well um, this is my current stance post trailer i didn't think it was an amazing trailer but the parts that showed harley quinn i mean she was doing her thing right you know her harley quinn thing yep she seemed good. Yeah. Daniel? What was the second movie? It's oh, one right. movie. Birds oh. of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Oh, okay. I was making sure I was thinking of the right movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the trailer was cool. I would like I would, I would watch it. I'm not like super excited about it though. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Well next you've got Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. And that's coming out June twenty twenty. One. <laughs> uh, I don't know, sure it yeah. sounds to me like maybe they're trying to you know Captain Marvel took place in the 90s now this is 1984 they're tr- I think they're trying to get you with some of the nostalgia like the period piece aspect of it yeah Daniel is this the second Wonder Woman movie this like is there the 1984th Wonder Woman movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is the second one yeah I would see it I liked the first Wonder Woman movie yeah. Uh, is uh, the guy Chris Pine? Is that the, the yeah. actor? Is he in it also? He is. Yeah. Cool. I like the two of them in that movie. Yeah. Alone's making a face because he's like, well, "How's he going to be in it?" Didn't spoiler. Didn't he die? Oh. Yes. So people don't know. It's it's mysterious. How is he in this movie? And he hasn't aged a day. There was a, a set pick of him. I like how in superhero movies they always find ways to bring characters from one time period to another. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe Thanos brought him back. 
<laughs> That's Marvel, Gil. He's probably I'm... frozen in ice, right? Okay. All right. Here's the big one. Here's the big well, what one. What do Ready? you think? You're not giving us your thoughts. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it'll be fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll figure out a way. No, okay, my, my thoughts, Birds of Prey. I really didn't like that trailer, to yeah, be honest. Either. I, I didn't did like the not trailer. like the trailer. I thought Harley Quinn doing her Harley Quinn thing, it felt really exaggerated. I don't remember. Did she always talk so like, Mr. J? Didn't she? Maybe she did. Maybe it was just, I, I think the trailer focused so much on Harley Quinn, it felt really one note. And I know that the movie sounds like it's an ensemble cast, right? Birds of Prey. Maybe in the next trailer, if we see more of the other characters, it'll work a little bit better for me. But for me, the trailer just felt really repetitive. The same joke of Harley Quinn not really taking everything seriously, being super zany. You know, it, it's funny because the original Suicide Squad trailer was awesome. Right. Like, whoever made the trailer, like, they knew how to make a good trailer. Yeah. <laughs> so by that pattern, Suicide Squad trailer was awesome. Movie was terrible. Trailer was not that great for Birds of Prey. Maybe the movie will be awesome. There you go. Wonder Woman, I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to it, but I probably have higher hopes for it to be a good movie versus Birds of Prey. The first Wonder Woman, I thought, act one, give it an A. Middle of the movie, probably give it a B or a C. In the last third of the movie, I'd give like a D. I, I hated the way it went with the big CGI battle, and I don't remember it too well. I just remember leaving thinking the movie started a lot stronger than it finished. Now, here's the big one, the big question mark. June 25th, 2021. The Batman. Are we excited for this movie? Yeah. Just because it's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they're going to be able to rescue this iteration of Batman? I mean, Batman v Superman, not good. Justice League, meh. Do we know anything else about the movie? Like, is it, is he like just starting out as Batman? Like, we know that it's younger Batman. It's not going to be an origin story. So he's been Batman right. for some time. We don't know how long. He's portrayed by Robert Pattinson, and they've cast a few villains already, right? They cast Penguin, Riddler, Falcone, right? Or Falcone. The mob, the mob boss. That's right. Uh, John Turturro was just cast in that role. Catwoman. Uh, so it sounds like it was rumored originally that the movie was primarily going to take place in Arkham Asylum. They've recently come out and said that's not the case. Some of the movie will take place there, but it's not going to be an Arkham set title, an Arkham set movie. They have said they're going to try and embrace Batman's detective roots and really emphasize that aspect of his character. Beyond that, we really don't know a whole lot. Well, I like that. Because uh, Batman's always been like the world's greatest detective, right? Right. So it's we haven't really seen very much of that in the previous movies. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, sounds good so Agreed. far. Agreed. Even in Christopher Nolan, he did some detective stuff. But I don't leave those movies thinking, wow, he was a great <laughs> That was the world's greatest detective. Daniel? Yeah. Batman? I guess I never I guess I never saw Batman versus Superman and Justice League, right? Like I didn't care enough to see Batman in those. But I do love Batman, so if this movie's gonna be good, I would love to see it. Do you have uh confidence in the writers, directors? Matt Reeves movie? is uh directing this movie. He directed uh War for the Planet of the Apes. Okay. Oh, that was a good movie. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so I, I actually think that's the one I'm most excited about, not just because I'm a Batman fan. And how big of a Batman fan am I? Well, you were drinking out of your Batman coffee mug earlier. Yep, and what other Batman memorabilia do I have? Your shower curtain. Shower curtain. What did I do for uh, Halloween? Dressed up as Batman. Dressed up as, that's right. So I'm a, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Why, why Anything I, else? <laughs> I have the Batman logo tattooed on my chest. <laughs> sure, your chest. <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so yeah, I I think that's going to be a solid movie. Looking forward to that. Then we've got Aquaman two in December twenty twenty two. Not none of us saw Aquaman, right? Right. I never saw it, but from what I hear, it was kind of like Thor Ragnarok, where they they were kind of going the comedic route a little bit. Uh, from people have been telling me I should watch it. Yeah. 
What about you? No, I've heard the same thing. I've heard it's a solid movie. And people have said that Aquaman has kind of become the Thor of the DCEU. Now, one thing about all these movies is if this were Marvel, they would have announced, yeah, Birds of Prey, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and then in 2024, we're going to have Justice League. They're not doing that. It seems like they're moving away from the Justice League concept. They're trying to focus on these solo movies. How do we feel about that? I mean, would you rather see them laying a clear path to a Justice League? I would rather they take it one step at a time and evaluate the performance of each of these. I think Marvel had the confidence to lay out like a decade-long plan, but DC, I think they're well aware of the missteps that have occurred. Right. So I like that they're taking it a little slower. Yeah, and I I think not only that, but they're taking some chances in terms of each of these movies feel like their own movie. Like, I I don't think Birds of Prey is going to be at all similar in tone to Wonder Woman versus Marvel, where I think the movies have some legroom to move in terms of tone, but they're all some variation of action comedy. Mm -hmm. I don't think Batman is going to be an action comedy. And I think part of the part of what allows that freedom is if you're not going to have all these characters culminate in one movie, you kind of have a little bit of freedom to say, let's make these all different movies. Let's have them all stand on their own. What about you, Daniel? What, what What's your preferred approach? Yeah, I think I, I like the way you just described it. Honestly, like whatever will help us get a good Batman movie is really right. what I want. <laughs> Uh, we also have, uh, this one's not a movie, but it's worth mentioning, uh, Green Lantern. Greg Berlanti, the guy who's uh, in charge of all the Arrowverse shows, Flash, Arrow, Ooh. all that stuff, Supergirl. Um, do you know about HBO Max? No. This is WB is doing their own streaming service. They're sick of everybody else having their own. So they're doing an HBO Max. And it's a little bit confusing because they have DC Universe streaming service. So they're going to have superhero shows on both streaming services. HBO Max, DC Universe. But they've announced Green Lantern as an HBO Max series. That one was interesting to me because you think Green Lantern, that's a big sci-fi effects heavy concept. And they're doing it as a TV show. But I saw one, you made a face when I said Arrowverse. Oh. Uh, yeah, just cause I, th- I feel like all those CW movies have kind of a reputation at this point. They're all kind of, the, the demographic seems like it's for a younger, a younger audience. Um, when I first started watching Arrow, I was pretty impressed with the darkness of the show and how ruthless of a hero he was. Um, but I feel like they kind of stepped away from the original tone. I haven't watched it for many seasons now, so mm-hmm. You know, for all I know, it, there is some of that in there now. But, yeah, I, I watched some of The Flash, and then I kind of, my interest kind of dissipated. Right. I mean, same for you, Daniel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, besides that, here are a few movies that are still being talked about, but I have doubts about whether or not they're going to actually happen. They haven't announced release dates, and th- these are movies where they keep changing the writer. It's just unclear what's going to happen. Th- the Flash. So Flash showed up in Justice League, played by Ezra Miller. Currently, Andy Muschietti, who created uh, It, the director for It, is slated to make a Flash movie. I don't know if it's actually going to happen at this point, especially considering Ezra Miller is really busy with that Fantastic Beasts. Those movies, Harry Potter spinoffs. Are those any good? I really didn't care for the first one. (coughs) And even people who liked the first one, they tell me that they did not like the second one. So, well, we got three more on the way. So, then there's a Green Lantern Corps or C O R P S Corpse. Hmm. Green, how do you pronounce that, Daniel? I think just Corp. Corp. Green th- Lantern Corp. So <laughs> they've been talking about that movie for a few years. So that would be a bunch of Green Lanterns coming together, and uh, that's another. One. I have doubts about whether or not that's going to happen, considering they're doing the HBO Max series. And I know DC gets a little skittish about having a movie and then having that character on television at the same time. That's why with Batman, you've got a Batman movie coming out in a bunch of series that kind of happen around Batman. There's that Butler show, Alfred. You've got Gotham that just wrapped up, Batgirl or Batwoman. 
Yeah. I kind of like that. I don't know if they're, they were doing it intentionally, but the, the movie and TV universes for DC are kind of like the comics where you have all these different versions so it's like if you're interested in one type of Batman, you could go watch the movie. If you're interested in another, you could watch the show. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's really the opposite approach of Marvel, where Marvel, they're doubling down on the everything is connected concept. So any new Marvel shows coming out on Disney Plus will tie directly into the movies. So you don't have that same choice you have with DC. So both approaches... I mean, so far, obviously, Marvel's been killing it box office-wise. Uh, but we'll see how this approach works for DC. There is a Superman, Henry Cavill. It's been rumored for a couple of years now that he's done playing Superman, especially since they have recast uh, Ben Affleck. People figured, all right, the whole Batman and Superman, they're done. They're going to basically reboot them. But recently, in this, this week, Henry Cavill says he is not done playing Superman. There's nothing slated right now officially, but uh, there might be maybe another Superman movie coming with Henry Cavill somewhere down the line. Uh, I would be interested to see that. Like I said, I liked Man of Steel, and I'd love someone to take another go at that and just give Henry Cavill a better movie to play Superman in. Yeah, I mean, so while I didn't like Batman v Superman, I thought he did a terrific job as the part. Like he yeah. fit it really well. Yeah, agreed. And speaking of Superman, J.J. Abrams. You guys know this guy? Yeah. Yeah, what's J.J. Abrams made? A uh, bunch of awesome things, right? Lost? Yeah, Lost. That's your go-to. Right? <laughs> the guy you Star literally... Star Wars. More and more. Movie uh, of all time. <laughs> Lost. And Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah, all the Star movies. Star Wars. <laughs> he made Star Wars too. He's doing he, Force yeah. Awakens and Rise of Skywalker. Oh, well, that's awesome. How can you even consider He's yourself part it. of the Starship Troopers? Wait, what else? What else? Starship <laughs> Troopers. <laughs> not true. <laughs> did, did he have anything to do with... Um... The TV show Alias? Yes. Oh, wait. I, I, started th <laughs> I started thinking somehow of uh, Joss Whedon. <laughs> Those are different. Those are different human beings. <laughs> <laughs> they both start with a J. But actually, speaking of Joss Whedon... Uh, so what was so J.J. Abrams? Basically, there's been rumors that J.J. Abrams has been meeting with WB with DC recently to potentially get involved in the DC EU. It seems like he's the guy you want to bring in to resurrect franchises that are struggling at all. Star Wars, Star Trek, maybe now it's DC. He had been talking to them in the early 2000s to do a Superman movie that fell apart, but they might be bringing him back into the fold. But why Joss Whedon? Why is he relevant? Are either of you familiar with something called Release the Snyder Cut? I've been seeing that all over Twitter, but I'm not exactly sure. Have you seen this, Daniel? No. Uh, so Justice League, when that movie, uh, when that movie was being made, it was originally being helmed by Zack Snyder, who had made Man of Steel. He made Batman v Superman. So he was making Justice League. Partway through the production of that movie, Zack Snyder had to step away due to a family tragedy that brought Joss Whedon in to finish the movie. And apparently when Joss Whedon came, in, came aboard, he did a lot of rewrites, a bunch of reshoots, and people ended up not very satisfied with that movie. Since then, in the last couple of years, little dribs and drabs of information have come out about Zack Snyder's original intent with that movie. And there have been rumors that there exists a Snyder cut, basically the Snyder version of Justice League. And fans have been clamoring to see it. It's unclear if it's a lot of people who want to see it or if it's just a very loud minority. I mean, they have done things like raising enough money to buy a billboard that says release the Snyder <laughs> Cut. They've raised a lot of money, which they've given to charity and also used to fund things like the billboard. And they've just been keeping that drum going for a long time now. It's gotten the attention of some of the stars of the movie who have tweeted about it. But anybody that is in any position of power, they've basically been saying, it's not going to happen. There's not going to be a Snyder Cut. I mean... There isn't a fully produced Zack Snyder version of this movie. 
So people have uh, people on the inside have claimed that they've seen the Snyder Cut, and what they describe is some of the movies made. Some of it will be kind of animated portions where it's just storyboard, unfinished effects, that sort of thing. But this week, somebody I think on Instagram told Zack Snyder they were losing hope that they'd ever get to see this, and he simply replied, "Don't." <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know. I mean, how do you feel about... Like, should they release a Snyder Cut? I mean, why not? <laughs> I, I, there were f- some fears that what if they release it and it's better than the original movie and then people will blame the executives who made the decisions to to chop up the movie the way they did. Uh, it's, you don't really feel... You're not like, ah, oh, I feel bad for those uh, movie studio. <laughs> well, I feel, I feel like people probably already have that thought like the fact that they want it probably implies that they feel like it might be better than what they saw right so the thoughts are already there regardless yeah that's true i more just feel bad for joss whedon why oh because they released the snyder cut (laughs) yeah he's a good director i feel like he did his best yeah yeah i i honestly i i would have said there's no chance it'll ever get released but why would snyder stoke the flames if it's not going to ever come out and now part of the if they do release it it's not going to be a fully satisfying experience because he intended for his justice league to be the first of two or three movies so we know the movie's going to end on a cliffhanger if it gets released the i could maybe see it happening on hbo max the streaming service Maybe it'll be more of a behind-the-scenes documentary-style thing that gives you enough of the movie. But I just can't see a movie studio being comfortable releasing like a rough draft movie where 10 minutes in, it cuts to storyboards instead of actual movie. I think they would just be afraid of how audiences would receive that. But if they do it, I think it'll be kind of unprecedented. Maybe if people keep asking for it, it'll eventually happen. We'll see. Uh, overall, though, all right, so that's pretty much everything they've been saying about DC. Uh, like I said, I don't really think any of that was new information. Uh, but Alana, if you were put in charge, you're head of the DC EU, and they ask you, what are we going to do? How do we make people excited about DC? That's a good question. I think that from what you said, it sounds like they're trying a little bit of what I would want, which is self-contained stories for the individual characters uh i I really like obviously you know i love joker i I think it was it was a very unique style it didn't feel like it belonged to this other unit this whole universe but i would be very interested to see it connect at some point so i would love self-contained stories with maybe hints at a connection to the others and then maybe eventually we can get another combination film like Justice League. But right. I think they should wait until they've established these characters and how they should all be treated. Right. Do a Justice League when someone has a good take on it and it'll be a good movie. Do them justice before you do Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Daniel? No, I think that makes sense. The only thing I'm wondering is, I guess, like, why has DC been unsuccessful, right, relative to Marvel? Or, like, is it is it just that they've executed poorly on each of the movies? Or do they also just have, like, characters that just are less appealing, right? Like, like all these characters besides, like, Batman and Superman, like, do they have the same level of following that, like, a lot of the Marvel well, superheroes had? That might be a valid argument, except Iron Man. Nobody cared about Iron Man. Mm. And that was considered pretty risky. But Marvel Studios had basically no choice because they'd sold off, they sold the film rights to all of their big characters. So they couldn't debut with a Spider-Man movie. And they took Iron Man, a character nobody cared about, and built the entire Marvel Universe off him because they found a way to make that a successful movie. So, I don't know. I mean, that might be part of the argument, but clearly it can be done to take these characters that are lesser known. Maybe The Flash. I don't know if the average person is aware of The Flash, but you can make a good Flash movie, right? For me, the reason that DC movies have have failed 
is a combination of, number one, if I look at the people who write and direct these movies, I personally am not a big Zack Snyder fan. I think visually he can do a lot of interesting things. But I don't think that if you're going to follow Christopher Nolan's Batman, that was such a nuanced take with Zack Snyder, you're kind of going the opposite direction. You're going with maybe great visuals, but I I got used to having this great take on Batman. I knew I was going to be disappointed by whatever Zack Snyder did. On top of that, they were trying to rush into Justice League. And if you watch Batman v Superman, there's one scene where I think Wonder Woman, or I forget who, yeah, Wonder Woman or Batman get a little SD card that essentially has little movie teasers for The Flash, Aquaman. <laughs> yeah. It was so blatantly shoehorned in that it definitely weighed the movie down. So I think it was just a combination of movie studio trying to pull it in certain directions and, frankly, not getting the best talent to make each movie. I do think they're doing some of the right things now, though. And they got somebody good for Batman. Uh, it's It sounds like they're giving them leeway to try different things. Even with Aquaman, that movie was made by James Wan, the guy who made Conjuring, those horror mm -hmm. movies. And he's currently developing a horror spinoff of Aquaman called The Trench, which I guess is a dark and spooky mm -hmm. part of the ocean. That's intriguing. Yeah. So I think if they can do their version of Marvel where creators have more freedom, they don't all have to fit the same mold, they can be a little bit more mature when it's appropriate, like Joker. They can do movies like Joker where maybe they don't tie in at all. I think that's great. That's the direction I want them to go. And we'll see how it goes. Like Daniel said, the main thing for me, if we can get a good Batman movie, mm -hmm. I'll yeah. be happy. Yep. All right. Last thing I want to talk about. I think every episode, we've got to talk a little bit about Star Wars, considering we're just a few weeks away from the end of the Skywalker saga, Rise of Skywalker. So there was an article recently saying that Rise of Skywalker is currently tracking for a $200 million opening weekend, which is a great opening weekend, except Force Awakens opened at 248. Last Jedi opened at 220. Rise of Skywalker is currently projected to be 200, which would be the lowest of the trilogy, of the new trilogy. Well, and I told you this earlier, and you said, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I mean, people have been disappointed in general by these new movies. I'm, I'm not surprised if uh, some people dropped off. I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably one of many people that is going to see it just because I saw the other two, and I, <laughs> I just have to finish it. Yeah. What about you, Daniel? How did you feel about Force Awakens, Last Jedi? For me, it's similar to Walking Dead, where it's like, or, or like the Walking Dead spinoff, where I enjoyed watching them, but I, I don't even remember them, and I, I don't, I don't really follow the news about it because I, I guess I didn't enjoy them enough to actually follow it. Right. Like I'll definitely see it. Mm -hmm. Part of my theory has been. That I think if they really, I guess they are pushing it, but they're, they're saying this is the end of the Skywalker saga. And you would think that would draw tons of people in. Because even if you weren't super into the last couple of movies, you would at least say, well, I love Luke Skywalker, Leia, the whole Star Wars story. And this is supposed to be concluding the whole thing. It's not just the end of the trilogy, but it's the end of the trilogy of trilogies but i was watching a teaser today uh, a tv spot and it says this is the end of the skywalker saga and the only skywalker on screen is kylo ren and he's a jerk so <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't have that ninth movie ending feel to it as much as i'd like but I, hey i'm gonna see it not only that I bought five tickets, even though we're probably only going to use two of those. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pumping up those box office numbers a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. I think I'm, I'm probably the most excited at this table. I am looking forward to it. I liked Last Jedi. I liked it probably quite a bit. I just had a few complaints about it, and I wish it was better. And one last little tidbit. Here's one reason that you're both going to be excited 
to see Rise of Skywalker, and that's uh, Christopher Nolan. You both like Christopher Nolan, right? Yeah. yeah. Daniel, you love Christopher Nolan. I do. He has a new movie coming out called Tenet. Very little is known about this. All they've said is that it's an action epic evolving from the world of international espionage. And it's rumored to have something to do with time travel, maybe. That sounds awesome. And you know, Christopher Nolan, he likes to drop six to seven minute kind of snippets of his movie before big movies. Rumor has it that Rise of Skywalker, if you see it in IMAX, there will be a six to seven minute teaser for Tenet. We're not seeing it in IMAX, though, are we? No, we're not. <laughs> Is that before or after the movie? Before. It's kind of weird. They did the same thing with Dark Knight, I think, yeah, before I Am Yeah, I remember watching the, the robbery scene, right? Yeah, that's right. That was that's awesome. Right. Yeah, so we're going to have to see Rise of Skywalker twice. <laughs> All right, I hope it's good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and uh, if anybody out there needs tickets for Rise of Skywalker, I've got three extra ones. Right next to us. Yeah, one take contest. See Rise of Skywalker with Gil and Alun. You can sit right between us. <laughs> we'll give you our live commentary the whole movie <laughs> mouthful of popcorn yeah. this is the bar <laughs> can we bring these microphones in yeah we'll bring the mics in <laughs> fun fact Palpatine is actually... hey I'm doing a podcast here oh, All right. sorry sorry yeah <laughs> alright well, that covers it there's a lot to get through but this was a big big episode because it's Thanksgiving this was the Thanksgiving one take special <laughs> Maybe next time we'll discuss uh, some things we're more excited about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And one thing I'm not going to do is end this episode with a copyright, so, copyrighted song. So we're not going to have any music unless I find some good license-free music to end on. Right, Alon? Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening to the One Take Podcast if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to go into the Apple Podcast app, leave a rating, maybe leave a review. And if you're on Overcast, you know, hit that little button that shares it with your friends, spread the word, be a part of the One Take family. And make sure to go to youtube.com slash one take vids where you can see video reviews video breakdowns of other shows like Watchmen and Mandalorian. By the way, if you're a Mandalorian fan, on this podcast stream, we are recapping The Mandalorian every week. So check back in a few days for that episode. Anything else along? we got to tell the folks at home? I think you covered it. Surecast.com. <laughs> One Take is part of a network of entertainment. Go to SureCast.com. Looking for comedy? Listen to Gilville. Looking for thrills? It's bone-tingling tales of terror. Listen to Gilville Campfire. You a better call Saul fan? Check out SaulCast and our other offerings on SureCast.com. Thanks for listening. Okay, now you've covered And how do you spell SureCast? S-H-U-R-C-A-S-T.com. All of the links will be in the show notes. Thanks for listening.